Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. We're back up here at Teasers in Ogden, Utah, Johnny Richie. You couldn't fit another soul in this place, Johnny. No, Mike, it's a packed house. You got people from corner to corner. They can't even clap. They're just trying to move their shoulders around a little bit. But your main event features a UCE staple, a guy, an icon that is, uh, he's an MMA icon, but he's doing kickboxing tonight because he said, you know what, give me a challenge. And we found him a challenge tonight. Yeah, Dave Foley, Mike, uh, from up here, this kid. Uh, you know, listening to uh, the people that talk about him say this kid's the real deal in MMA and in kickboxing. He said, you know what, maybe I'm not ready for the bird dog yet for a full NHB match, but I'm going to tune him up with a little kickboxing tonight. Big words, my friend, big words. It's the ultimate combat experience coming right at you. Johnny, you and I have a favorite fighter, and he's coming out here right now. Chris Lee, who's he fighting? Chris Lee is fighting Curtis the Crippler Leishman, Mike. And I think this is a great matchup. You've got Chris Lee, a guy that we saw stand up and trade with Robert Miller. We've seen him submit guys on the ground. He's coming off a loss against Curtis Leishman, a guy that likes to take it and dump you on your head if he gets the chance. All right, well, let's get it going. Welterweight Noah's Bar, check it out. Both these guys, very exciting guys to watch inside the cage, but undoubtedly my favorite interview, uh, Chris Lee. <laughs> Mike, he's always so nervous. He, it's, it's like he's walking and missing for the first time each and every time he fights. He's almost apologetic about even being here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, he's a tough kid, and he's uh, withstood uh, the last opponents, and, and really, uh, he's a tough kid all the way Boy, he is getting tougher and tougher. Well, I'm just going to try to have some fun, and I think he's going to be another tough dude. Oh man, um, um, I, I hope I just have fun and that's, you know, just, just hopefully it's exciting and just try to keep up with his pace and just hang in there with him. Undoubtedly, it will be exciting, Johnny. <laughs> it will be, Mike. We know the Crippler, Mike, he's got a great uh, wrestling background. He, he's known for just picking kids up and dumping them and slamming them in big takedowns from Curtis. I don't think he's fought anybody he hasn't dumped on their head. At 5'9", 155 pounds, he's aptly named the Crippler. Uh, I'm pretty aggressive. I like to throw people. Uh, my favorite is kneeing him in the face. That's one of my favorites. So hopefully I can do that a couple times and uh, hopefully he'll know I'm there. I hate to lose. I got a lot of people coming to watch me tonight and uh, there's nothing worse than losing in front of everybody. So I got a lot of fight and I want to I want to hurt somebody tonight. You know, Kurt, Curtis did bring a good crowd tonight, as did his opponent. There are a lot of people in the crowd tonight and a lot of energy in the room. Dude. Well, it says a lot about these guys, you know, Mike. They're not only uh, good and tough fighters, but they're also personable. They, these are guys that both have a good a good attitude about the sport and about uh, fighting in general. Absolutely. You couldn't fit another soul in the place tonight, and this place is rock, and these guys coming out a little bit tentative, kind of pawing at one another, but Curtis Leishman does what Curtis Leishman does. He tried to get inside to tie him up, and he's looking to dump him on his head right Yeah, absolutely, Mike. He's, once again, I, whether it's a body lock or it's a big takedown. Curtis, nine times out of ten, will get his guy oh. to the ground. And just right there, kind of spun around, and now he winds up in the guard of, uh, of, of, our, of our friend Chris Lee. You, Chris can Lee. Tell, you can see that Chris was, was waiting for that throw to come because he was putting his hips back, so he just couldn't quite get the leverage to throw him. Now he finds himself almost putting on a triangle choke, but this is what Curtis Mason Leishman likes to do. He likes to hear your body slam against the canvas, but hey, all you're doing is tightening that uh, triangle up. Well, yeah, my, and, you're, and you might be tiring yourself out. You pick a guy up enough times like that and run around and try to slam Land him, you're burning a lot of gas, you're burning a lot of energy. And right there, you see Chris Lee doing a pretty good job of hooking the outside of that leg, not letting uh, Curtis.
Curtis get that uh, get the momentum he needs for oh, the big slam. Curtis was able to somehow break that triangle choke, though. It looked to me like uh, the thing was really starting to cinch up tightly. But now you see Curtis Leishman sitting up and dropping a few bombs on the face of Kurt Chris Lee. Well, I think this is how you, this is what you have to do to beat a guy like Chrissy Mike. If he's going to try to submit, you really have to punch your way through this thing, and and that's what he's trying to do right here. Because if he knows if he stops for just one second, Chris Lee is going to tie him up. Well, if you punch, make sure you punch and get those punches back. Because as you mentioned, all Chris Lee is waiting for. He's looking for something to be left behind. And you see right there, he's willing to take the punishment for it, boy. And I'm not sure this is such a great strategy. Yeah, he is taking a lot of shots. I'm like, oh, but right there, just as we say that. <laughs> it pays off. It pays off. He's yeah. got the arm. Right now, he's going to tear old Chris <laughs> <Lichman's> arm <laughs> off. That thing was on tight. He wasn't getting anywhere. Dude. No, Mike, that's it right there. Once again, that's a... Uh, Chris Lee to a, to and a he, T. And just he's going to apologize for doing it. I'm sorry I did that. I'm so, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> More like, oh, yeah, gosh, geez, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sure glad I got my arm raised. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's happy. and That's about as much uh, uh, positive emotion as you're going to see out of this kid. He's just elated right now. Hey, congratulations, Chris Lee. Curtis Lee, my man, come back and do this thing again. I'd like to see it, possibly a rematch out of these two guys. This post-fight interview is sponsored by Beehive Bell Bonds because sometimes bad things happen to good people. We had a big throw, you had a couple, you had a nice big slam, but it didn't go your way, man. So, Curtis Leishman, let's get you to the gym. Let's get you training with those guys over at Westside Jiu-Jitsu because they're doing a great job with their fighters that they have. All right. All right, right there. Tonight you were good, my friend, but just not good enough. Thanks a lot. This post fight interview brought to you by Ayers Law Firm and the DUI Hotline. Give Tyler a call at 255 5555 or check him out online at utahduihotline.com. What do you got, lead in your head? Oh man, there, I, there are some hard punches. <laughs> there are some nice they didn't ones. phase you though. They were oh, hard man. punches, but Us? you just smiled and wrapped up his arm. Oh, glad. That's the way you're supposed to do it. That's the way they drew it up on the chalkboard <laughs> over there at West Side Jiu Jitsu. And obviously, you were paying attention. Great job tonight, man. Thanks. What's next for you, brother? Um, I just told to keep training and just want to thank the guys at West Side Jiu Jitsu and the Zen Head Shop for sponsoring me. So, you're telling me that Chris Chronic Lee is sponsored by the Head Shop? Weird. Yeah. yeah, the head shop. Yeah, that's what a fit right there. No, but he's always a nervous flipping wreck before he gets in here. And then he does a great job like that. Threw that arm bar on. Perfect. And he gets the win. That was awesome. We got more of the ultimate combat. Don't go anywhere. In the first of two Muay Thai kickboxing matches tonight, we got a kid who's this tall. Fighting a guy who's not quite so tall, man. What do you know about these two? Well, I know Tafuna Tamalolo Mike has been away from the game, but he's had victory on his mind since the last time he fought. He's been in the gym working hard. His stand-up is slick, it's crisp, it's clean. But John Ladd on the other hand, Mike, he's undefeated inside the cage for us. And uh, he goes, look, that's the way I want to keep things. Every time I go back to Idaho with the W over my head, it makes me that much Got more it. proud. So. He's tough. This is going to be a great one. Muay Thai kickboxing heavyweight. Check it out. I've been spending a little time with old Tafuna Tomalolo, and you're right, Johnny, he's been putting the time in. He's definitely coming a long way. He's never done kickboxing before, but we want to check it out tonight. Yeah, Mike, he's a traditional MMA guy, likes to, likes to do a little bit of everything. But tonight he said, hey, you know what, I'm going to step in here, I'm going to do some uh, modified Muay Thai and have a good time in doing that. You know, I wish I knew. It's just uh, one aspect of the game, uh, one aspect I'm pretty decent at, I guess. Uh, Stand-up, I've always felt it's kind of been my strong suit. But uh, either way, uh, just uh, gonna go out there and get it done. Well, he's planning on getting it done, but it's easier said than done. But Big John Ladd is just, he's a horse, Johnny, and he can move. Oh my gosh, Mike, his legs are like tree trunks and he throws those things like it's nobody's business. He's not afraid to kick you in the head. Oh, well, uh, last time I stepped in was about a year ago and I, I fought a guy named uh, Sid Falonico. Uh, it was a kickboxing match and it, it went the distance. It was a good fight. Uh, well, I think I, I have the edge and experience, and I'm gonna, I have the right game plan. I think that I, I'm going to do the right things in the fight. It should give me a victory. Well, you know, Big John Ladd, he seems like just a 
good old boy, but uh, boy, when he starts firing off, he, as you mentioned, his kicks are as good as I've seen, and, and he's got pretty decent hands as well. Yeah, he does, Mike. He does a really good job of pacing and, and putting his fighter out there at the distance where he can throw those legs, and obviously you see the reach advantage there, and he uses that reach advantage very well. At six foot five, he's gonna have a reach advantage on just about anybody he fights. You see Tafuna trying to close the gap here just a little bit with some leg kicks, but right there, if you stand at that distance, John Ladd can really get some force behind his leg kicks. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Lolo's no uh, stranger to throw any heavy leg kicks, Mike, and he will do that, and, and they'll hurt. They might not be coming from that long of a distance, but he's powerful. Right there, he just got a sense of what'll happen if you leave your head down, because you see right there, John Ladd was able to hook on to him and pull him into a clinch there, and gave him a couple knees for his troubles. Uh, Tafuna's gonna have to stay out of that range, doing a good job of that right now, throwing some shots here to the body and, and just staying out of his range. Yeah, Mike, but you're right, I think Tom Lolo, he's gotta cut the distance here. He's gotta get inside and work that body. Oh, oh and a spinning back fist from old Big John Laugh. Big John's got a lot of, uh, of different things in his repertoire there, and you saw it, he just missed with that spinning back fist. That could have been very ugly for Tafuna. Tafuna landed a nice combination right there, but you see John Laugh doing a good job of covering up. Yeah, Mike, covering up and actually giving him a kick to get him off of him. And, you know, once again, Tom Lolo is gonna do just that right there. I think he's gotta close that distance, throw those punches, throw nice body shots. You see him doing that as well. Uh, something that John Ladd's really not doing, he's doing the push kick and then throwing that big leg kick over. Well, here's the other thing that that six foot five frame poses as problem is that you really have to explode to cover the distance in order to hit him, which means you're gonna run out of gas. You know, it, it just puts so much more pressure on you as the smaller guy to try to get in and get out and not get stuck in between, as we mentioned, in that clinch. Well, you see that Lolo is throwing those kicks to John Ladd and John's not even blocking him. I mean, they're just smacking him in the, in the, in the leg and it's like no big deal to him. You know, been there, done that, it seems almost. John wasting no extra energy either. You see it once again, Tafuna having to fire off. And when he does, though, he's he's getting in there. Gosh, John Ladd has got such great defense, though. He really, none of these punches are landing solidly. They're really doing a whole lot of damage. Yeah, like he's covering up right there. And then Lolo did throw a couple of knees. But then you see, oh, bow, baby. when he gets that space, and boom, he throws the right big shot. at the bell, a kick to the head by John Ladd. And we mentioned that before the fight. John Ladd can get those kicks up there on you. He did a great job there of just letting Tafuna Tomalolo punch himself out, and as soon as he felt Tom Lolo stop punching, he landed a nice kick combination in exchange. <laughs> And that's what it's all about right there. Lolo comes out with an old flying Superman punch. That may work in MMA, but I don't think it's going to work against Big John Ladd today. Well, something like that. You're going to have to do something like that to get up the body. But you see right there, he even had uh, his opponent backed up against the cage while John Ladd backed up against the cage. But John Ladd just gets those arms up and takes them all on the arms. Once again, Tom Lolo uh, just covering up, throwing a couple leg kicks. Uh, but John Ladd, you see him just kind of pacing. He's just kind of doing that movie time march, waiting to set something up and then land that big kick to the head. I think Tafuna's got to do more of that. He lands some pretty solid shots to the body right there. In order to chop a tree down, he got to start at the bottom. And and uh, right there, he did a good job, but he's got to do more of it. I think he's aiming too much of that six foot five ahead, and that's a hard target to get to. <laughs> Reminds me a little Mac and Mike Tyson's punch out, Mike, trying to jump up and connect with him on the chin right there. And he's done it a couple times, but he did. It took a lot of effort to do that. That there, a nice leg kick, but once again, not following it up. He's got to put combinations together. But I think Tafuna, as we alluded to in the first round, might be getting a little bit tired. You see his chin hanging open just a little bit there, his mouth hanging open rather, and getting a little sloppy. That wouldn't have <laughs> happened to a fresh and, and a, uh, ready to go Tafuna Tamalolo. No. Well, I know Tamalolo, too, once again, Mike, he's stepping out of his realm. We got to say that. That says a lot because his stand-up game is good, Mike, but in the past, when we've seen him in trouble in the MMA game, he takes his opponent down and ground and pounds him, and maybe he's thinking about that right now. Well, a lot of MMAers will tell you that, that you know, if I feel like I'm getting tired, then I just try to get a takedown so I can go rest for a little bit. There's no rest for the weary in a kickboxing match. Right here, you see that uh, John Ladd senses blood, and he's really, oh, I think he got him in the ding-ding there. Oh, he might have got, well, I don't know what happened, Mike, but he threw oh, a know. nice leg kick. No, and then, he, he threw a knee to the head is what it was, and those are illegal and modern modified Muay Thai rules and what he did is he hooked him up and you see right there had this been a full Muay Thai match I think Tafuna would be done. Yeah yeah he got that knee split right through the gloves and caught him right in the chin and John Ladd acknowledged that that was the mistake that he made we, you can knee the body but just not the head. Well it's hard when you're six foot five to not hit the head. <laughs> well, I, just as you say that he throws a monster right kick and even though Tomololo uh, blocked it it still uh, did its damage. When, when you block a kick of a guy that's 260 like that and he's that tall with that much velocity behind it that's going to reverberate through your brain whether your arm blocked it or 
or not. Trust me. And you see right there, <laughs> Tafuna's having a hard time. He's tired. Yeah, Michael, and I think he's frustrated too. You see right there, he just stopped. He's not used to this. You know, he's not used to having, uh, him, you know, these guys not be affected by his punches. And you, you talked about John Ladd's defense. And once his hands are up, you're not going to, There, it's impregnable. You can't oh. land the shots. There you go. He needs to work that body. And I just haven't seen him do enough. But boy, right there, you see another nice little kick by John Ladd. He is very versatile, boy. Showing a lot of stuff tonight. Yeah, he is. But I like that Lolo getting in there. But once again, Mike, is he punching himself out? You know, is he just hoping that this 30-second flurry is enough or 10-second flurry is enough to, to uh, knock John Ladd out? I don't know. Well, I have to give you this. I mean, T Tafuna, he knows he's probably down two rounds to nothing. He's going down swinging. He's not leaving anything up to chance. I think he's really trying to take this fight away. He knows he's going to have to knock him out to win this fight. Yeah, man, but you can tell those oh, leg baby. kicks. Yeah. Those leg kicks, Mike, are taking their toll. Every time he even lands a one, you see Tom Malolo, he, he he's grimacing. He Johnny, are hurting him. big guys aren't supposed to be able to kick like that, and you're seeing a lot of really nice kicks out of John Laddick, and they're technically very sound. Usually when you see a, a big guy kick, they still have power on their kicks, but their technique is usually kind of sloppy. Not the case with John Ladd. Very, very good stuff. Well, I like what he's doing right there, Mike, is he clinches up, and then, oh, it lands a nice body shot. But he's throwing kicks from inside the clinch. He's not just looking Whoa. to knee, knee the body. He's throwing leg kicks as he's clinched up, Boy, and that you know, takes its toll. And for as tall as he is, to be able to throow those, it's, it's kind of weird. But, but boy, he's able to do it and with great effectiveness. And right now, I guarantee you that Tafuna's going to be walking funny tomorrow. He's landed probably 20 of those leg kicks to the left leg. Yeah, both these guys, Mike, I mean, John Ladd is not, he's not, he, I'd say he looks better in the shape of the two, but you can see he's tired as well. Oh, right it's now. not been any walk in the park for him. I guarantee you he's going to have nothing but good things to say about Tafuna. This was a tough fight for him, but a very dominant performance for him. I just think he, he found that range, as we talked about in the first round, and once he did, he's been able to just pepper Tafuna with just about anything he's wanted to. And that's uh, Tom Alolo's strategy right there, Mike, is to get in there and go, you know, 10-second flurries and throw a couple combos. And But John Ladd sees it coming. He just covers up, and, and Lolo's got to switch it up a little bit. Well, switch it up with about five seconds left. Looks like, you know, there is a sense of urgency with there with Tafuna, but, <laughs> boy, he just dodged the bullet there. And that's pretty aptly appropriate right there. That is an apt finish to this fight. Both these guys really <laughs> laying it out there for you. And they just want to lay there. They just want to lay there and hang out. Maybe, maybe they'll read each other other story or say something right there both these guys might give them what they had and they really worked hard boy did they ever and i don't think there's many surprise here let's listen in on the judges 28 lad. yes number two scores it 28 29 tamarolo By split decision, fighting out of the black corner! Oh, no real surprise there, Johnny Ritchie, in my book. I mean, I was a little surprised that it was a, a split decision because John Ladd, such a, a dominant performance yeah, tonight. Yeah, he's a monster, man. And I, Tom Alolo, hats off for just stepping in here and doing it with this guy, man. What a tough kid. This post-fight interview brought to you by Got Your Back Realty. Give Gary McDonald a call at 809-GARY or check him out online at www.igotyourbackrealty.com. Lolo, you're a man of few words tonight. Probably one of the smartest guys you ever meet right here, old Lolo in the house. Hey, man, listen, tonight you were good. Just not good enough. Who do you need to thank tonight? Uh, I want to thank Phil, everyone down at Ultimate Combat. Uh, Are you tired? Yeah. You're beat. You, you fought a hard fight tonight. He wants to thank all the ladies that are going to buy him a drink after because oh, he'll be partying here all night long. You know that's the case. Lolo, I love you, Manson. Once again, tonight you were good, brother, but just not good enough. Thanks for being a part of the experience. If you are looking to make full-time wages while working part-time hours, give Brett Hansen a call at American Alarms, 310-0187. Hey, you make me feel inadequate over here. John, you are just... Some of the stuff I see you do you shouldn't be able to do. <laughs> great job, how do you feel? I, I feel great. Uh, can I take a moment and just to thank this man right here, Matt Mayhem May. He trains over Twisted Genetics, he's trained with me a lot. He teaches you how to train, how to fight, how to kickbox, and I just want to say thanks first to him. Pretty cool cat too. Like the hell out of that kid. You're in good company and uh, I'm telling you, it's not, I, I see a lot of him in you and, and, and it's neat to see. What's next for you, man? Uh, just keep training with Matt and uh, the Twisted Genetics crew, 
and uh, we'll see where that goes. I, I didn't mean to say that Matt's sloppy because I'm a sloppy fighter. Matt's not a sloppy fighter, but. You're lying if you say that. If, if there was any slop in there, it wasn't because you're a sloppy fighter. I'll tell you that right now. Big win for you. I got to say, Tafuna's a tough kid. I'm real impressed with you. I hope you come down a lot more. We love having you down here. Great job tonight. Congratulations. Thank you very much. But ladies, Tafuna's, he's tired. His defenses are down. Take Thank your you. shot right now. All right, we got more of the ultimate combat. Don't go anywhere. Division, one of the guys I really like to see come out here. Jason Del Rio is coming out to fight next. Who's he fighting, Johnny? Well, he's fighting Sean O'Connell, Mike. This is a guy that uh, he's got a little bit of a, you know, a little history behind him. They said this kid's a scrapper, a fighter, not afraid of a soul. Uh, he's willing to get in there and, and, and mix it up, whether it's on the street. But now it's inside the cage, brother. A little bit different story, but he's in here to prove himself tonight. All right, well, let's get it going. Heavyweight no holds bar. Check it out. Jason Del Rio, certainly one of the good guys in the Ultimate Combat Experience, always there ringside, always willing to help us out uh, outside the cage, but he's inside the cage tonight, old J-Rock. Old J-Rock, Mike stepping in here. This kid, Mike, in his past fights has looked really good. You see uh, the, the time that he's spent in the gym has really uh, uh, done a great for him. He's, he's looking better every time. It's starting to pay off, but man, I tell you what, if I stepped inside the cage and saw this guy <laughs> lined up across from him, I might change my mind. A six foot one, 220 pounds, the OC is a pretty big kid. So, without a doubt, Mike, uh, he's a tough kid, and, and he says I'm a wrestler. You know, my, I've got good takedowns. I, I can head throw, and, and I plan on uh, getting Del Rio to the mat and just pounding him out tonight. Well, these guys, we're not even going to listen to what they have to say. We're just going to get right to the slugging, and these guys <laughs> are not disappointing because right off the bat, a nice exchange, but uh, Sean O'Connell's got to learn to keep that head up. Uh, if you don't, you're going to get need and maybe choke. Well, yeah, right there, Del Rio doing a pretty good job. He's got the head down in between his uh, arm right there, almost like a guillotine, and then he's throwing knees to the body, and, and then, uh, you know, also you saw right there, giving him some little punches as well. I probably shouldn't have been giving those punches. Should have hung onto that head, because now you just made the giant man. Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah, he's throwing. He talked about being a wrestler. I don't see any kind of wrestling coming out of this. I just see hammer fists. Yeah, he's Mike. mad, Johnny. <laughs> he just got his head twisted a little bit, and now he's coming out to punch you right in yours. And boy, well, that's it. This fight is over. Yeah, that's it. J-Rock woke him up, Mike. You <laughs> talked about it right there. A little rabbit punch. Woke him up. Sean O'Connell, wow, he just gets in here and pounds him out. Look at him, he's just chilling too. <laughs> <laughs> very impressive, very impressive win, man. I can't wait to see this kid get back here and do it again. It's like a walk in the park for this guy, wow. In your welterweight division, a great matchup in my opinion. Brad McCray, Ray, Rick, uh, McRae, who's he fighting, John? He's fighting Kevin Greenwell, Mike, this kid. Man, he gets in here and he fights hard for us every time. He's a good looking specimen. Uh, he's pretty technical, but Brad McCray is the kind of kid that he wants to stand up and bang. All he wants to do is end a fight on his feet. So I'm praying for him tonight, but these guys will just bang it out. Somebody please stand and trade with me. I think we're gonna see it tonight. Well to wait in the bar, check it out. Not a whole lot of time for talking, Johnny. We're going to slide right into this thing here. Kevin Greenwell and Brad McRae. If there ever was a chance of a uh, stand and trade fight, this is it. Yeah, Mike, and I hope, I hope that's what it alludes to. I hope these guys get in there and just bang it out. Uh, Kevin Greenwell, Mike, a class act, the kid that's doing this fight for all the right reasons. I really well, like you this know, guy. He's got a future in the game, there's no doubt about it. If you couldn't tell by looking at him, uh, just see what he <laughs> has to say. Oh, yeah, Mike, he spent some time in the gym, that's for sure. I'm donating all my money from uh, my fights and like ticket sales to uh, the Pat Tillman Foundation. Um, uh, whoever knows anything about Pat Tillman, I mean, just armed forces and just everything they do. And just he was a great man, and yeah, just representing him tonight. I'm gonna bring everything I have to the table, and can't ever predict the outcome of a fight. But I hope he comes prepared to put on a show for the crowd and just give the crowd what they want to see. Yeah, you know, Johnny, so often do we see these fighters, you know, they, there's always, you know, what, what's in it for me kind of attitude, and you get a guy like that, and, and really, man, it, yeah, <laughs> it stops you. Yeah, donating all the proceeds to the, the Pat Tillman Foundation, it's a great, a, a great, great thing that he's doing there. Brad McCray, he just getting in here, Mike, to knock someone out. That's it. That's his, that's his motivation. Uh, striking mostly, but I haven't got a chance to show it. Maybe tonight I can. I don't know. I'm feeling kind of crazy. I might even just take the guy down and try some ground and pound, so whatever. 
Well, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever, man. Okay, well, we were praying for stand-up, and now he's talking about doing something really wild, like taking him down. Well, uh, you know, again. Enough of the wild if stuff. If you line up inside the cage, and then somebody that comes out looking like that, maybe you change your strategy. Maybe you say, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you decide you just want to throw him. Maybe Hopefully I could not. just be a fence jumper. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what uh, if, if all the hype leads up. You know, is is what's going to happen in here in the cage? Well, area. right here, a pretty uh, tactful beginning. Both guys kind of filling each other out. But you see right there, Brad McRae, for whatever reason, he wanted to stand and trade, but he's taken two shots already, and I don't know if that was the best advice. Yeah. Now Kevin Greenwell has has his back, Mike, and can pretty much throw shots at will. We've seen this as a real dominant position for some of these guys. They'll just sit back there and wait, and this. You pop your head up, he's gonna punch it. And well, Rabbit Crazy just covering up right now, Mike, trying to save himself. Why is it every time a guy says they're gonna stand and trade or they want to stand and trade, this is what they well, do? I don't get it. <laughs> well, Kevin Greenwell, Mike, is actually having his way with Rabbit Curry right now. He's just behind him. Once again, just waiting. He could be here all day, at least for the next three minutes, uh, throwing punches underneath and, and really making Brad McCray suffer for giving up his back. Well, Brad's not doing a whole heck of a lot to, to, to defend or anything like that. And it looks to me like Dave Selly said, said, hey, we've seen enough of this. I think it was a verbal tap out, Mike, right there. I'm not sure what happened. You can see <laughs> Brad McCray doesn't know what the hell just happened. He just got punched on. I don't know what happened either, but we raised a little money for a good cause, and that's all that really matters, yeah, right? The, yeah, Kevin Greenwell, the soul smasher, gets in here and uh, does it for the cause. Mike does it for the Tillman, Pat Tillman uh, Association. Pat, so Pat Tillman Foundation. Foundation, yeah. Not association. I'm an idiot. This post-fight interview brought to you by Got Your Back Realty. Give Gary McDonald a call at 809-GARY or check him out online at www.igotyourbackrealty.com. Hi, right, man. Hey, listen. I heard a little tale that you're donating a little money tonight to the Pat Tillman Foundation. Tell me a little bit about that foundation. Donating it all. It's uh, the late Pat Tillman. Uh, defended our country. Had a chance to play for millions of dollars and gave it up to defend what we have here. So, what, what does the foundation do, though? It's uh, just leadership by like leadership by action. A lot of what Pat Tillman was all about, just helping uh, build more leaders in our in our country and just making it a better place. Right on, man. I gotta say that's that's very very impressive. Big win for you. Great job and congratulations on being the guy that you are, man. I just want to thank uh, everyone at Samurai X. Mark, awesome. He, yeah, got me there. I want to give a shout out to all the guys in Elite. If there's anyone in here, those guys helped me out tons too. Good luck, Bird Dog. And yeah, Elite, miss all you guys up there. But thanks a lot, Samurai X, Mark. But yeah. He's got lots of love to spread around like peanut butter. Great job tonight, man. Thanks. How often do you find a kid with that kind of fiber? I mean, just, just a cool kid. I mean, he's not here for the money. It's, it's all about it. Yeah, we got some good guys in this show. Well, we do, Mike. You know, people out there maybe have the misconception about MMA and, and the things that these guys do. But right there, it just shows you this guy's giving back to the community. He wants to build future leaders and eventually maybe have those guys come in here and do this thing. So there's no better sport to build leaders than this one. Really, it is. It's, it's, it's all about finding out who you who are, are, man. We got more of the ultimate combat. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, and I gotta tell you, it's not gonna get any better than this ever. Who are these two? Well, Mike, it's James the Bird Dog Birdsley, the UCE icon, uh, versus Dave uh, Foley, Mike, a kid that is supposed to be uh, one of the most underrated, toughest kids around the, in the state of Utah. Well, let's get him rated. Right here, it's your main event, welterweight, Muay Thai kickboxing, check it out. James Birdsley stepping out of his realm just a little bit here, just for the competition, because James says nobody will fight the MMA anymore. Nobody will, Mike. It's hard to find this kid fights. We gotta look all over the United States to get people in here to fight the bird dog. Is he in slow motion? He is, Mike. I don't know if he's just prepared. I've never seen James in this style before. I haven't either. I don't know that I like it. It Five worries me. 170 pounds. I'm a little worried myself. It worries me. Uh, what happened in my last fight is Donnie Rain stepped up uh, in December to, uh, you know, get about. Uh, I put him down and choked him out, uh, just like I should and will always do, Donnie. Yeah, uh, I was hoping for a Muay Thai bout so I could work on my knees and elbows, but uh, looks like he won't do that. He won't go through it to, to my strength, so he wants to kickbox. So, you know, I'll do some kickboxing and I'll show you how to be lightning quick and still headed. 
Uh, you know, I'm going to win because I got the greatest training group in the Utah right now, Team Elite. Uh, you know, they're really putting me through the drills every day and uh, making me be better. Uh, they're all working to be better themselves. And so for me to be the best, uh, I got to, uh, you know, compete every day against uh, the number one people in Utah. Yeah, I need to thank the DUI hotline, 255-555. Uh, you know, go there. Uh, I need to thank Titan Development, Nate Brockbank, uh, Emily uh, Knight with Caldwell Banking, uh, which is my sister, Elite Performance, and also, of course, we got Zip Fizz, Energy Drink, you know, give you all day energy like the bird dog. Be as fast as you can. And, you know, go down to the Mouthpiece Company and get yourself some nice watches, grills, and chains so you can be fresh. Step into the O era. Donnie. Donnie. I don't even know. I what love to say. I just love James. There was Berkeley. so much material running through my hair. Oh and, my and, god. And, and now hey, Dave, welcome to Disco Day. <laughs> Why Disco Day? Well let's just leave it that way. Like, you're right. If he can even match that uh, interview half, he's good to go. He's, he's good to go. Well, I've been uh, coaching Chris Lee, Chris the Chronic Lee. And uh, just watching that guy get in the ring, man, uh, I've never seen somebody with more heart. So uh, that's what inspired me to get back in here, you know. I'm getting ready to open my own gym, and so I, I you know, I don't know how many more fights I got in me, but I, I want to want to get get in here and get it done. Well, I've, I'm mostly an amateur boxer, you know, I'm a stand-up guy. I have, I've had six MMA fights. Uh, I like to grapple as well, so, but uh, mainly I'm a kickboxer. That's my thing. We've all seen how Bird Dog fights, and I don't think that I need to make this an exciting fight. I think he's going to make it an exciting fight. But, uh, you know, I didn't call out Bird Dog. This is my game. He shouldn't be standing in here fighting me and, and doing my game. You know, if he'd have called me up a week ago and asked me to fight him in MMA, I would have said no because I it would not have been a smart move. So I don't think it's smart for him to take this fight on last-minute notice, you know. Uh, I just think that, you know, I'm going to take this fight seriously. I'm going to... I'm going to try to finesse him, but he's so aggressive. If he comes at me and I'm scrambling, I just can't get it done, then I'm going to just stop, square up, and bang with him because I don't think he can bang with me. So that's my plan. Now, we haven't seen Dave Foley in quite some time. Uh, looks like, wow, what's going on here? I, I don't know, Mike. I think possibly Dave Foley parked in Dave Silvestead's reserve parking and spot. Clearly, Dave's not happy about that. <laughs> I think Dave is letting him know how he feels about it. You park in my spot, buddy. And uh, you would think the two were married or something. Well, this he's... reminds me a little bit about how my wife and I act right before we make love. He's telling him right there, you get that no, damn get car, that out, of that car out of that spot. I'm telling you now, we're going to tow it. That's wow. what... Now, I don't know in certain terms, really. You put a Pinto in a Porsche's parking spot, you he better expect to get yelled at. <laughs> well, that's what happened there, Mike. Well, now that that's all settled, let's just let these guys fight. I think that Dave's on steroids. I don't know something, he's Mike. A little Jeez. Jeez. Boy, he's a honey sucker. Well, let's get, the, get to the fighting now that we've got over the arguing. <laughs> <laughs> the arguing leads to fighting, Mike. And this Sometimes it does. And right here, James Birdsley is stepping out of his game. You know, it's funny that Dave Foley said, I don't think this was a smart move for James Birdsley at the last minute. There's no such thing as the last minute for James Birdsley. No. He's always ready to fight on a minute's notice. Without, he's not projecting down six weeks or eight weeks. He's ready to fight today. Well, that's that's really what separates Bird Dog from a lot of these guys, Mike, is Bird Dog is always ready to go. No excuses. Win or lose, the kid is ready to rock and roll. Under any rules. And you matter. can see right here, he's landed some pretty big shots here in the first round. Uh, and I don't think Dave Foley expected it. No, I don't think so either, but Dave Foley saw landed a pretty nice uh, right there up to the side of James Burns' head and kind of wobbled James up just a little bit. James's weak spot has always been his stand-up. That's why he's doing this fight. I yeah. mean, I, I, again, I think Dave, James Bursley sees things on such a different plane. This is nothing more than an experience for James Bursley. He's not trying to become the next kickboxing world champion. He's trying to become the next MMA world champion, and this is a stepping stone to do that. Well, and then once again, Mike, just says a lot about James Bursley. You know, this is competition for a lot of these guys, but this is almost just a training session for him. Get in here, uh, fight hard, and really test your chin, test yourself. And these guys are doing that right now. Now, Mike, they're banging. It almost maybe looks a little bit in, in slow motion, but they're they're making those shots count. It is in slow motion, Johnny. But you know, I mean, they're nailing some shots, and both these guys have taken and delivered some shots here in the first round, right there. Dave Selly said, putting a stop to the action to get the uh, mouthpiece rinsed off and back into the mouth. If it looks like it's James Birdsley's, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, maybe. Yep, James Birdsley. Dave Foley gave it a pop, gave him a punch, and popped right out of his mouth. 
Well, that's because James likes to carry that thing loose. You see right there? <laughs> that's not intentional, Larry. He's just he's just that nutty. Well, Dave fully <laughs> cocked back, and I think we're just ready to spit it out anyways, you know? <laughs> Oh, uh, right here now, Jay, or Dave Foley seizing the opportunity here, and look, he felt like he might have had James a little discombobulated and really putting it together a nice combination with James Bursley up against the cage. And James Bursley throwing knees to the body, Mike. Once again, this is modified, modified Muay Thai, so he can't throw knees to the body, to the legs, wow. uh, just not to the head. You know, and, and I guess we should clarify, some of the arguing that was going on in the first of the fight here uh, was over some miscommunication on what exactly the rules were that they agreed to, and right there you see they're doing modified Muay Thai kickboxing folks and that means you can knee to the body but not the head and there are no elbows but you can clinch and uh, that might be a little bit different than what Dave Foley was expecting when he came into the cage tonight. Yeah quite boss me Mike but uh, either way they're getting in here mixing up and Dave Foley says I'll fight him if that's if that's the case if that's what it's going to take for me to fight I'll do that. Well I'll, you know and Dave's been around long enough that I don't know that this should be much of a disadvantage for him. He's done all of these different rules for a long time. I think uh, he's very adept at all this and right now he's holding his own without a doubt. Oh without a doubt Mike you know he's He's made James Birdsey pay a couple times for throwing wild punches like that. He comes charging in, and Dave said, hey, I'm going to stand and bang with him because I know how aggressive uh, James Birdsley is. And right there, you see, this is like a, a this is like a dance, Michael, with fists uh, punching and kicking and doing it all. You know, it's kind of funny about that. In his interview, James Birdsley said, I want to be quick as lightning and have a head of steel. And at the time, I kind of laughed. It's supposed to be lightning and thunder. <laughs> But right here, the head of steel part is coming in good because he's taking some big shots and it doesn't even seem to phase him. No, he's not. He landed a kick a little earlier. That might have almost swept Dave Foley to his butt. Uh, but Dave Foley did a pretty good job of recovering from that. And now, these guys are just swinging, Mike. They're just... <laughs> I love it. Yeah. This is that stand-up fight we were talking about. This is what we well, like to see. Here it is. There's no doubt about it. There's your clinch, but not a whole lot of it. I think these guys just like hitting each other. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right there. I think that's going to be ruled a knockdown, yeah, Johnny. Without a doubt. He did get clipped on the chin, and his knees buckled. And right there, you see Dave Foley gathering his uh, wits about him just a little bit. Dave, so he said, looking deep into his eyes. Deep into his eyes, making sure. You see there's a concerned citizen nice looking lady in the front row wondering what, what was happening right there she Mike. sure was but uh, <laughs> right there that could, should make things a 10-8 round if uh, if things continue the way they are oh, oh right there, there is the great <laughs> equalizer uh, Dave Foley now knocks James Birdsley to the ground and before that it was really anybody's round because they were just swinging for the fences so Wow, Johnny, that, that was what happened That's to funny, punch. right there. You never know. You, you, but Dave, Dave Foley comes charging across. Mike, with just a few seconds left, these guys really got to prove uh, this round. It seems he's going to win. Somebody's going to have to steal the round at the end here, and I just think I'm going to call it a toss up. Boy, both these guys <laughs> did their damage right there. Great work on both accounts. And these guys, Mike, are both in, in pretty pristine condition. You see, they're not they're breathing on Mike, but they're not really huffing and puffing. I like it. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what this third round brings. Well, I'm telling you, the third round is anything like rounds one and it's going to be exciting. There's no doubt about it. Don't go anywhere, folks. Round three when we come back. Man, oh man, Johnny Richie, they missed <laughs> nothing but a slug fest going on here between the bird dog, James Birdsley and Dave Foley. Oh yeah, Mike, without a doubt, they get in here. They both have knockdowns in the second round, Mike, and uh, this fight has lived up to the billing. It's exciting. Without question, and it's really anybody's ball game going into the third round because, well, it seems like first and second round, it was just kind of give and take. Both guys giving, landing a lot of shots. Not a whole lot of defense, but a heck of a lot of offense. Yeah, a heck of a lot of offense, Mike, and that's what I've been waiting for all night long was to see guys uh, stand up and trade and this modified Muay Thai match uh, really makes that happen. So well, you know, it just seems like those punches are in slow motion with Birdsley. It's maybe those big gloves or something. He's used to, you usually when you see him, it seems like he's got such great hand speed, but it <laughs> seems like they're moving in slow motion. Well, you're right, Mike. They are. He's used to fight with those four-ounce fingerless gloves, and right now he's uh, using these big old boxing mitts, and he's not used to it. But uh, that's why he's in here, Mike, is to get to get used to it. Well, so. a nice uppercut right there by James Birdsley in that last clash right there. Uh, it really, it's going to be a matter of who can land and that big shot here in the third round, I think. Somebody's going to have to walk away with a big, big shot here in the but, third well, round. Well, James Birdsey's charging to push and Dave Foley, Disco Dave into the cage, Mike, and then really, oh! oh, and then lands a big head kick when right there. When was the last time you saw James Birdsey kick anybody in the head? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. And Dave Foley acknowledged you going, yeah, he did. He caught me. You know, it was more of a pushover than it was a complete knockdown, but still he's going to rule and that way. And follows it up with a nice uh, two-punch combination there on the chin of Dave Foley, and I think that rocked Dave as well. Yeah, well, Dave Foley, Mike, talked about James Birdsey uh, stepping in here into his world and 
not really being prepared, but I tell you, James Birdsley, you, you always comes prepared. Always. You know, I think, wow, another right hand there, and with the glove touching the ground, that should have been ruled a knockdown. Dave Seistead did not call that a knockdown, I think, to the good fortune of, of Dave Foley. And he's just eating that right hand every time Birdsley throws time, it. Yeah, Birdsley throws it. And Birdsley, you just see how powerful this kid is. just hammering him right here. Uh, shot for shot, but then Dave Foley throws a nice uppercut and lands right on the kisser of James Birdsley. Well, Foley has landed his fair share of shots, but he is taking him right here. A relentless assault by James Birdsley. He can smell blood, and it's kind of like a Rocky movie right here. Just exchanges back and forth. <laughs> Look at the facial expression on these guys, Mike, on Dave Foley especially. <laughs> Birdsley just pinning him up there with the left hand and James rocking Birdsley him with the right. threw him to the ground. I think Dave Sully says wiping this thing off, calling that a knockout because really, Dave Foley was wasn't answering at all for the last 15 seconds. I think only three seconds left on the clock. Johnny, I think it's it's really wouldn't have made a difference. James Bursley clearly won that. Who won round. that third round, Mike? Wow, in impressive fashion, pushing him up against the cage and landing the big shots. And James Birdsey, man, what a character. What a character. I didn't need to see that tongue thing he is, but uh, boy, you know, he's happy about that win and probably should be. That's a pretty tough kid he just beat. the bird dog comes away with the big money. And congratulations, James Birdsey. You get in here and do it once again. Nice job, brother. Dave Foley, don't hang your head, man. Please come back and do this thing again. But don't park in Dave's spot. Yeah. <laughs> if you are looking to make full-time wages while working part-time hours, give Brett Hansen a call at American Alarms, 310-0187. Dave, tell me how you're feeling right now, brother. Well, I'm disappointed, man, but you know how many people I got here come to support me? Thanks. Woo! Tons. I, I've never heard this place so loud as when you knocked him down. This place went flipping bananas. Hey, man, I got to give it up to Bird Dog, dude. I watched him back there punching the mitts, dude. He did not look good. I thought I had his ass, man. The dude has just so much intensity. He's so damn aggressive, man. Woo! He came and he took it right to me. No, Dave, listen up, man. No. That was one of the best fights. I'm not I I hate to be in this position because none of these fans, and I we're not losing. We're, you know, we did not lose by watching that fight. It was back and forth. It was a battle. Right down to the very last second, you gave it your all. Dave Foley, man, I'm glad you stepped in. I'm glad you fought tonight. I want to see you come back and do this thing again. Yeah, you got it, Johnny. I'll be back, man. Hey, hey, and I'm looking in your eyes, and I know that. Thanks, man. Hey, I got to say one thing. Danny Sanchez, he comes out here. He's got a lot of fighters coming out here. His brother passed away this weekend. I was planning on beating up Bird Dog and dedicating this fight to him. But since I got my butt kicked, I'd appreciate if Bird Dog would dedicate this fight to Danny Sanchez, man. I, and I doubt, and I know Bird Dog is that kind of guy that he'll do that. But I tell you right now, Dave Foley, you got in here, you represented yourself very well. Your gym, you're a hard, you're a hard, tough kid, and uh, I can't wait to see you come back and do it again, man. Thanks, Johnny. One more time, a round of applause to Dave Foley. Tonight you were good, brother, but it's not good enough. Thanks for being a part of it. Thank you, thank you. This post-fight interview brought to you by Got Your Back Realty. Give Gary McDonald a call at 809-GARY or check him out online at www.igotyourbackrealty.com. Bird Dog! Man, once again, standing wow. in the winner's circle, how's it feel? Feels great. Uh, you gotta love the kickboxing. You know, I'm a great grappler, but I do like to strike. I gotta tell you, I'm standing over there by the uh, Athletic Commission and they're saying, well, what is Bird Dog doing kickboxing, man? What's he doing? Running out your game, right? That's right. You know, I got big plans, big things. Uh, thanks to Mike Stidham, babying me a little bit, making sure I get prize fights. <laughs> I got to tell you right now, brother, I love getting you prize fights. I love having you fight because you bring it. You bring it every time, man. And that was that fight right there. That was all this right here, man. I got to tell you, very, very impressive win. Thanks. You know, I feel in great shape. Uh, you know, I had to take a little time off, and now I'm you know, getting back into things and really doing well. Still the champ, brother. Still the champ. Great job tonight. Congratulations. Thanks, Mike Stidham. You made it all happen. Thanks, bro. I don't care if you like him or hate him. You got to respect him. Bird Dog, he's all hard, man. Yeah, and Dave Foley getting in here for the first time I've ever seen him fight Mike, and he had the Bird Dog to his knees. Not once, but almost twice. It was just a back and forth battle. That's what you gotta love yeah, when you watch fights. You ain't just gonna come steal one from the bird dog. The bird dog put you to the test, and uh, hey, this is not even his game. No. And he still 
dug down deep and did it. No, he did. That's just the bird dog, man. You're never going to find a tougher um, a minded. It's hard, everything. Bird dog's just a tough kid. But Dave Foley, I see that kid going places. If he keeps sticking to his game, he'll, he's going to be a champ one day. Speaking of going, I got to go. So we're out of here. Hey, we got more next week. So tune in. It's the Ultimate Combat Express. We'll see you next week.